Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and welcome back to the All Things Homeopathy Materia Medica series. Today I'll be talking about the homeopathic remedy silica. Silicon, which is an element on the periodic table with atomic number 14, is rarely found in nature in its pure elemental form. It nevertheless exists as a compound called silica, or silicon dioxide, which is naturally occurring and found in a variety of minerals like flint, quartz, and sandstone. These silica-containing minerals constitute an amazing 95% of the Earth's outer crust. One could say that silica and other silicon-based compounds form the backbone of the very land that we live on. Silicon-based compounds are also found in many plants and in the skeletons of some animals. They're known to enhance the stem strength of wild grasses, bamboos, and grains like wheat and barley. They essentially help form the backbone of plant tissues, allowing them to stand stronger and to be more resilient. I urge you to keep this idea in mind as we discuss this frequently prescribed constitutional remedy. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the silica constitutional type is known to be quiet and shy. He is reserved and self-contained and will appear to yield to the opinions of others. He's sensitive, mild-mannered, and has delicate sensibilities. He's also quite thoughtful, and his mind is quick to comprehend. Although the silica type is usually emotionally solid and balanced, he commonly suffers from issues relating to self-esteem. Silica can be timid, insecure, and tends to lack self-confidence, but Unlike Lycopodium, for example, he is not cowardly. I'll never forget the first constitutional case that I ever took. A fellow medical student, a big tall guy, confessed to me that he was struggling with his self-confidence. After taking his case, I recommended silica. Both he and I were amazed to see the positive effect that it had on his self-esteem. Now, silica children can present somewhat differently than silica adolescents or adults. The children are typically shy, but also tend to be irritable and quite obstinate. In fact, most silica types have a notorious stubborn streak. This unusual combination of shy and stubborn is a good clue for the remedy. Silica children can be particularly irritable when they are not feeling well. The books describe how their shyness becomes evident when they respond to questions. They do so by whispering the answers into their mother's ear. As they grow older, silica adolescents become more refined and less obviously shy. I tend to think of them as precocious because they often present as proper, well-behaved, and polite. They have sharp minds and are usually very good students. And although they are quite intelligent, they sometimes lack mental stamina. And even though they're thoughtful, serious, and adult-like in behavior, they still admit to being rather quiet and shy. And just like silica children, they too are notoriously stubborn. But compared to the child who can be overtly cranky and obstinate, silica adolescents and adults are quietly almost deceptively stubborn. The homeopathic literature refers to the silica type as one who appears to concede to the opinions of others, but nevertheless has his own beliefs and convictions that he does not reveal. He knows himself. He knows where he stands on an issue, but he does not argue with those who might disagree. He just simply and stubbornly goes his own way. His internal beliefs can be so strong that it may be hard to budge him. He may resent outside interference. This is why silica is listed in some repertories under fixed ideas. Now let's return to this idea of silica as nature's backbone. 
As you can see, silica is timid on the one hand, but stubborn on the other. The silica type often vacillates between too much backbone and too little backbone. He may appear to yield to others, but internally he refuses to give an inch. He puts up little fight, but at the same time secretly concedes nothing. He is surprisingly strong on the inside, but ultimately lacks the confidence to assert himself, unless the situation absolutely demands it. He demonstrates both extremes, but finds it difficult to achieve a happy, balanced medium. And as noted earlier, Silica tends to be mentally sharp, but he often lacks staying power. So this lack of backbone or lack of strength can also manifest as mental fatigue. As we shall see, silica is prone to physical fatigue too. The seeming contradiction in terms between weakness and strength, between easygoingness and rigidity, between inadequacy and intelligence can produce a state of anxious uncertainty. Silica doubts his own abilities and becomes indecisive in his work. He often copes with his anxiety and indecision by focusing on small details. Silica lists in repertories under conscientious about trifles. Silica types are fastidious and known for their perfectionistic attention to detail. This self-doubt can also translate into performance anxiety. Silica fears include test anxiety, stage fright, and fear of failure. There may also be a peculiar fear of pointed objects, which is found in repertories under fear of pins. Now, before we move on, please note that my references to silica as he has been merely for convenience. In actuality, silica is a remedy that fits men and women and girls and boys equally. All right, now let's talk about the physical aspects of silica. Okay, it's important to note that in many cases, but not all, silica has a distinct physical type. Most silica constitutional types are long and thin. Silica infants grow faster in length than they do in weight. They often chart in the top percentiles for height, while at the same time charting in the lower percentiles for weight. They do not fit the stereotype of the round, plump baby. In fact, silica infants can have developmental issues in the sense that they may be pale, frail, sickly, or weak. There can be failure to thrive as a consequence of defective metabolism or poor assimilation of nutrients. Silica is a remedy for infants who have difficulty nursing. This usually happens because mother's milk can aggravate di their digestive systems. Silica lists prominently under stomach disordered after mother's milk and vomiting after mother's milk. It also lists under aversion to mother's milk and child refuses mother's milk. In addition to poor digestion, the infant may have a distended abdomen or pot-bellied appearance. It's easy to see why these children would struggle to gain weight, would lack stamina, and be easily fatigued. In addition, their teeth can be slow to come in, and they can be slow in learning to walk. Now, another prominent physical feature of the silica type is that they often have large heads. Their heads tend to be disproportionately bigger than their bodies. More specifically, the forehead is often quite prominent. The forehead can be either tall or wide or both, and it tends to be large in comparison to the rest of the face. In summary, silica infants and children to have, tend to have long, thin bodies, distended abdomens, and large heads with thin, fine, sparse hair. Nevertheless, against all odds, these scrawny infants usually grow up to be tall, skinny adolescents and adults. When I see a thin child or adolescent in my office, 
I sometimes ask where she fits in height-wise with her classmates. When I'm told that she's one of the tallest girls in her class, I think of silica as a possible remedy choice. All right, now let's talk about the silica generals and modalities. Generally speaking, silica tends to be chilly. She's aggravated by cold weather, damp weather, and drafts of air. She likes to wrap herself up in bed in order to stay warm, and she can be worse from uncovering. Some will choose to wear a hat, even in warmer weather. And even though silica is chilly, she can also be aggravated by hot, humid weather. Now, perspiration can be an important general for silica. There's a distinct tendency to perspire either too much or too little. Silica is the type who says, I never sweat, or even in gym class as a kid, I barely broke a sweat. On the other hand, she may seek help for excessive perspiration of the feet or the hands. Silica also tends to sweat on the head, especially on falling asleep or during sleep, and the sweat may have a sour smell. Whenever we can trace the onset of a problem to suppression of perspiration, we must consider silica. This applies especially to the feet. Silica lists prominently under suppressed perspiration aggravates and suppressed perspiration of the feet aggravates. This is why all smart holistic practitioners should warn their patients about the very real dangers of antiperspirants. Okay, silica's food preferences include a desire for sweets, eggs, and ice cream. And there can be a preference for ice cold drinks. Recall the silica infant's relationship to mother's milk. Not surprisingly, silica can be a remedy for milk allergy in both children and adults. Resulting symptoms tend to include cramps and diarrhea. The bottom line is that silica can be aggravated by milk, may be averse to milk, or can have a desire for milk. A couple of silica modalities worth noting are aggravation from mental exertion, which is due to their lack of stamina, and aggravation from vaccination. Silica is one of the main remedies for vaccinosis. Vaccine-induced conditions that may respond to treatment with silica include ear infections, diarrhea, eczema, abscesses, seizure disorders, and more. Another general tendency of the silica type is fatigue. The books refer to silica as, quote, lacking in grit. They often complain of weakness or lack of stamina and they can look tired and feel tired. Once again, we can think of silica's low energy as just another manifestation of having too little backbone or lacking resilience. They have poor staying power and may wilt under pressure. One last point is that silica has a reputation for being a slow acting remedy. When prescribing silica, it should not be abandoned too quickly and must be given adequate time to act. Benefits may accrue slowly over weeks and months of time. And just like the remedy picture, many silica physical ailments tend to be slow developing, low grade stubborn conditions. Silica can lack grit in terms of resistance to infection. She is prone to acute illnesses that develop slowly last longer than they should, and then resolve slowly. She is susceptible to frequent colds, sore throats, and respiratory infections. And those illnesses tend to linger, often becoming chronic runny or stuffy noses, chronic ear infections, chronic coughs, or chronic sinus infections. Now, silica also tends to have issues involving nails, teeth, and bones. Note that, like the spine, these are the harder, 
more resilient parts of the anatomy. And taken as a whole, they form the overall skeleton of an animal or a person. Silica is prone to arthritic conditions in general. It's one of the main remedies for scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine, a condition that literally weakens the backbone of the individual. Silica is also one of the main remedies for defective fingernails and toenails. The nails can be brittle, distorted, and ingrowing. A keynote clue for silica is white spots on the nails. Again, we see how the theme of backbone or grit manifests on the psychological level in developmental issues in terms of mental and physical stamina issues and in the kinds of physical symptoms that plague silica. Silica also has a predisposition toward problems involving glands, abscesses, cysts, and tumors. Acutely swollen cervical glands often linger and later become chronic. Silica has a tendency to develop abscesses which can become hard or indurated, and which may suppurate with pus formation. Silica is also a remedy for low-grade smoldering dental abscesses, rectal abscesses, and breast abscesses. These abscesses can slowly morph into fistulas that discharge fluid. Silica is also a remedy for nodular or cyst-like conditions, such as keloids, styes, boils, and tumors. It's a remedy for breast cysts and even breast infections. Likewise, silica can be helpful in prostate conditions, such as prostatitis, prostate enlargement, and prostate cancer. And silica is famous for its ability to expel foreign bodies that have been lodged in the tissues and that threaten to become infected or form abscesses. For example, it can help dislodge an embedded splinter that is hard to reach without the assistance of a knife. A couple of additional silica conditions include ringworm and vitiligo. And lastly, silica is notoriously prone to constipation. The stool has a tendency to recede again after being partially expelled. Books refer to this silica version of constipation as bashful stool. Okay, now let's finish up with remedy relationships. Complements to silica include pulsatilla, fluoric acid, and tuberculinum. Remedies to compare to silica include Calcarea phosphorica, which can fit cranky kids, is also tall and lean, has developmental issues, and is prone to dental problems. Calcarea carbonica, which desires eggs and sweets, is easily fatigued, sweats on the head, tends to be constipated, and can have developmental issues. Heparsulf and mercurius also fit abscesses, but their abscesses tend to be more acute and more painful. Natrum muriaticum is temperamentally similar to silica. Both are polite, thoughtful, considerate, and reserved. Natrum carbonicum is also similar temperamentally and has notorious problems with milk intolerance. Staphysagria II is refined, inhibited, and yielding, can desire or be averse to milk, and is prone to styes, abscesses, and prostate problems. All right, that's my take on silica. If you like these videos, please be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. As always, I welcome your comments and feedback. Please tune in again to the All Things Homeopathy channel. And until then, may the vital force be with you.